Hydrogen atoms or protons are not the only type of atoms that are used in NMR spectroscopy. It is also pretty common to use carbon atoms for NMR spectroscopy as well. I do want to point out that carbon NMR and proton NMR are two different types of instrumentation, meaning that you cannot get a spectrum, an NMR spectrum that has both carbons and protons at the same time. You either obtain a carbon NMR or you obtain a proton NMR, one or the other. In carbon NMR spectroscopy, the carbon isotope that is detected by the NMR is carbon-13. The carbon-12 isotope is not visible in NMR, so it can only observe carbon-13. And unfortunately, carbon-13 only accounts for about 1% of all of the carbon atoms in the universe. And this creates some complications when we are obtaining a carbon NMR spectrum and also when we are analyzing a carbon NMR. So first of all, because only 1% of all the carbon atoms in the universe are carbon-13, it's pretty unlikely that we will have two carbon-13 atoms in the same molecule. So each molecule, unless we have like hundreds of atoms, carbon atoms in the molecule, each molecule is most likely has either no carbon-13 or just one carbon-13 atom, just one out of all of the carbon atoms. The majority of the carbon atoms in a molecule are definitely going to be carbon-12. Because each molecule has no or only one carbon-13 atom, this means that it is not possible for us to get any splitting in a carbon-13 NMR spectrum. Because splitting comes from multi multiplicity, the interaction between two neighboring atoms, in order to have any sort of splitting at all, we would have to have two carbon-13 atoms in the same molecule. Um, and since that is extremely unlikely, there's just no splitting taking place at all. In addition to that, we do not get any meaningful integration in a carbon NMR spectrum. There just isn't enough data in a carbon-13 spectrum to get good a good reliable ratio of the different types of carbon atoms in a molecule. And so this means that if we're running a basic carbon NMR spectrum, all that we can get from a carbon NMR spectrum is the number of types of carbon atoms. All the peaks are going to look like singlets, just the number of types of carbon atoms, and that's very useful information, and also information about the shift due to the presence of electronegative atoms nearby. So it's not regular carbon-13 NMR is definitely not as valuable as proton NMR because we don't get any splitting and we don't get any integration, but carbon-13 NMR does give us some useful information, especially when we use it in conjunction with proton NMR. It's very helpful in terms of um, determining the structure of a molecule.